Time for a preview, a quick preview of the football this weekend. A lot of very interesting things happening. Firstly, Steve Johnson from Live 89.5, welcome. Thank you. Steve, last weekend we had a, a, a bit of a rough game. Uh, we ended up as a draw, which is a bit of a non-event, but there was a lot happening during the game. There was. Um, it all started in the second minute with the opposing team going 1-0 up. And then... It was uh, a bad start. It was a very bad start. And then uh, Phuket FC equalised, caught very well by you on camera, because it was an own goal. And then uh, they had a player sent off for, for two bookable offences. And then in the second half, for some strange reason, Phuket FC played better with 10 men than they did with 11. Yeah. Went 2-1 ahead with new signing Ludo scoring a cracking goal. Yeah. And everyone thought, oh, this is great. We're, we're going to get three points here with only 10 men. And in typical Phuket FC fashion, they conceded a goal, virtually the last kick of the game, making it 2 all, a share of the spoils on the night. And then there was time for even more drama when one of the players from BBCU was sent off as well for overzealous celebrations. And well, what's overzealous celebration? Well, um, I'm excited. Exactly, but the problem is um, there are certain rules and regulations, even on the night itself. You saw a very hostile crowd. Uh, did not uh, receive the sending off of the Puka FC player very well and you don't want to entice the crowds and this particular player encroached into the Puka FC training area, kicked the water bottle and was winding up the Puka FC players. And the fourth official... The John McEnroe of uh, yeah, Very much football. so. But I mean, you're, you're grabbing uh, an attention and obviously people are responding to it in a very aggressive manner. And this happens around the world, they're trying to stamp this out. So the fourth official actually saw what happened, he reported to the referee, and the young lad got sent on. Fine line though, because I suppose the crowds go for a little bit of that, uh, that fun and that action and the spirit and the passion, so you keep on trying to dull it down all the time and you end up with a, a less of a game. Well it's interesting because there's a lot of expectation for Phuket FC this year. Um, well done to the chairman investing and getting new players and, and it's great for the whole Phuket itself to get involved with this. Great value for money to go and watch the game and it's a family atmosphere. Yes. And then the other side of the coin is the guys who are sort of wear the passion on their sleeve all the time uh, and go there week in and week out to watch the team through good times and bad times. So when things are really going well then it's easy, it's more relaxed. When the pressure's on, which is on at the moment for Phuket FC, yeah. then these guys get a little bit wound up as well. Yeah. But this Sunday, we've actually got the continuation of a game that was washed out a few weeks ago. Yeah, there's always dramas at Phuket FC. Yeah. And yes, if you remember, a month ago, we had the downpour, the game was abandoned at the start of the second half. Well, they were playing in a lake by the They end, were. It? it was yeah. a rice field, yeah. basically. Yeah. Uh, and what happened was there's 40 minutes left of that particular game. Now the rules of the Thai Football League means if the game is abandoned they have to continue at the time that is left. Uh, luckily the score was 0-0 against PTT Rayon. So their game itself is going to happen this Saturday, 5pm kickoff. There's all sorts of wonderful things about this. It's free admission, yes. so if you've never seen the game of football before in Phuket, go down, support your local team, the Islanders, free to get in, and you get your free match guide, and yes. it's going to be 40 minutes of, I hope, uh, virtually the same as a UFC fight, when yeah, they go yeah, at yeah. each other for the yeah, 40 yeah. minutes in the best possible way, and then but hopefully uh, we'll get a result from it. Poor old PTT Rayong, they had to come all the way from what, Pattaya area, all the way down to about a 17 hour ride in a bus, play 40 minutes and go back home. Well it's the same for the fans of course and yeah. that's the reason why I think they brought it forward from a 6.30 kickoff to a 5pm kickoff. It's on Saturday night so game will be over by 6pm and then hopefully people can get home at a reasonable time. And we'll get to see it in the daylight too. Absolutely. Yes. By the way, what was the fine for uh, the fracas last, uh, last Saturday? Yes, um, because of the problems at half time, the referee tried to leave the field and things were thrown at him, yes. missiles were thrown Which at him. Which we caught on video as well. We did as well. Uh, evidence required, maybe in the future. Uh, and what happens is um, anybody that does such a thing gets reported by the referee in his report and in the end Puka FC have been fined 10,000 baht okay. and basically had their hand slapped and told not to do it again. It has happened before, they got fined 15,000 baht last time so uh, really the club suffers again but in my opinion those people need to be banned from the games in the future. Yeah, and brought into line. Mm. By the way I think the person threw uh, his uh, meal of rice um, wasted. Good meal, I thought. 
Well, especially as the referee himself will get a cup of tea at half time and well looked after. There was no need to he, do that. He didn't really. need the food, no. He didn't, not at all. Steve Johnson, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you very much indeed, Tim. And we look forward to seeing you at the football this weekend.